Guys, this is Mobin. We are talking about the respiratory pathology. Within that, we are talking about pneumonias. The disease within the pneumonias, the disease that we'll talk today, is about the community-acquired pneumonias. Community-acquired pneumonias are infections of the lung. Of course, all pneumonias are infections of the lung. The community-acquired pneumonia is further divided into two types: a typical pneumonia and atypical, typical and atypical pneumonias. Typical pneumonias is what we are starting with and then we will go to the atypical as well. The difference between the typical and atypical is typical pneumonia involve the alveoli and they consolidate the alveoli. Consolidation means fluid filling of the alveoli. Atypical pneumonia on the other hand does not involve the alveoli themselves. Instead, the pathology is present in the parenchyma and the septums of the alveoli. So, tissues and the septum. Most of the time, alveoli are empty. They are not involved. And so, the patient's x-ray and patient's symptoms do not actually relay the kind of problem he is having in the chest. On the other hand, typical pneumonia will involve the alveoli. There will be exudate in the alveoli, there will be bleeding in the alveoli, alveoli will become filled up and that will be showing up on the x-rays and this would also show up in the clinical uh, presentation as well. So, let us start. We are starting with the typical pneumonia. There are many pathogens, normally this is bacterial in origin. There are many pathogens that can cause this. Most common pathogen is the Streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus. So, we will use pneumococcus as our basic hero of this particular disease and see its effect on the system. Then we will look at other pathogens and see what kind of diseases and what kind of category of people they affect. So, first of all the definitions of course, the typical pneumonia is the infection of the lung that causes the involvement or that involves the alveoli in the inflammatory process and causes the alveoli to become filled up with the consolidated or consolidation. Now, what is the onset and what are the risk factors? Who are the people at risk? Most of the time these are bacterial infections. And the risk, people who have chronic diseases, for example, COPD, congestive heart failure, diabetes, these are the folks who are usually more vulnerable to these diseases. Secondly, folks who have their spleen, patients who have their spleen either removed or their spleen has become degenerated as a result of some disease, for example, sickle cell disease. So, asplenic patients are at a greater risk of the pneumococcal pneumonia and what is the reason for that? I will make that here for a second. So, look spleen, so let us say this is the spleen. Spleen tissue is the tissue with the largest population of the macrophages. So, when the blood comes into the spleen and passes through those macrophages, macrophages will pick up the capsular pathogens and remove them. They will phagocytose them and remove them. So, spleen is a big, big filter for capsular pathogens. When spleen is not present, then the capsular pathogens like pneumococcus will not be filtered out and such patients then will have recurrent infections with the capsular pathogens. All right, then the age extreme, children, and the elderly are also a at risk group. We are talking about the community acquired. So, this is the condition in which schools, military barracks, hospitals, not hospitals sorry. So, that is nosocomial is it is a separate type of its own um, workplaces, the shopping malls and stuff like that. So, these are the areas where we can 
get the infection. One more group of patients is usually at risk and that is the people who develop upper respiratory infections, viral infections normally. So, that happens common cold, viral infection. So, somebody developed a viral infection, then a secondary infection with the pneumococcus also developed. So, that is also a patient group that is at risk. Okay, so now let us look at the presentation and the clinical findings. Presentation is simple. Patient would normally come to you and say he has sudden onset of high grade fever. Remember that normally the common colds pattern is that viral infections affect the lungs first and so patient has some mild cough, you know, some problem with the respiratory airways, some itching and some uh, discomfort low grade fever, malaise, a little lethargic and then all of a sudden the patient would develop a high grade fever, might develop chills, will have headaches and will have dyspnea and breathlessness and of course start developing cough. So when that happens you are now sure that the patient has moved from viral infection to a bacterial infection and more, more probably possibly the pneumonia has occurred. So that is the onset. When patient comes to you, what do you see clinically? So, this is of course, the lungs are involved. So, this is very important for you to keep in mind. How do you identify the problems? So, first of all, there is dullness in percussion. So, what happens is, see the areas of the lung are going to become filled with fluid. So, when they become filled with fluid, it is easier for the sound. So, if this was a little tiny speaker here, the sound, it is easier for the sound to pass through the fluid filled spaces. At the same time, the percussion in those, the resonance in those of the vi vibration will actually become dull. So, you would see dullness will be present. At the same time, the patient would have vocal fremitus. What does that mean? That if you put your hand on the patient's chest and ask the patient to say 99 or some other statement again and again, you would see that the, the resonance of the chest wall will increase because the sound waves are easily conducted. If the sound waves are easily conducted, what do you think will happen if you put the stethoscope on the chest? When you put the stethoscope, that sound will be high as well, right? So, bronchophony will be present. Similarly, egophony will be present. What is egophony? You put the stethoscope on the chest and ask the patient to say E, E, and the E will sound like A, as if the patient is saying A, A, that is called egophony. So, that is also a sign of consolidation, and again, consolidation means fluid filled cavity, fluid filled alveoli. What else will happen? You will hear inspiratory crackles at the end of the inspiration. So, you ask the patient to inspire and near the end of the inspiration you would hear crackling sounds. So, these sounds will be present as well. Then the patient would have bronchial breathing as compared to vesicular breathing. So, vesicular breathing or normal breathing is normally it is said it this way that inspiration is longer and has higher sound and then connected with the inspiration is expiration and has lower sound. So, on the other hand, bronchial sounds have both inspiration and expiration that are higher in volume. They both are harsher and there is a gap between them. I am exaggerating, but that is a kind of sound that is called bronchial sound. If you want to hear the bronchial sound, put your stethoscope on your trachea and then do inspiration and expiration. The sound that you would hear from here is going to be like a bronchial sound. The patient would have that kind of a sound available in the areas of consolidation. So, bronchial sounds will be present, bronchophony would be present, egophony will be present, vocal fremitus will be present and dullness on percussion will be present. And so, sorry, so dullness on percussion is when you take your finger and you, you, per, you percuss, 
what will happen is that the area that is dull, the area that is consolidated would have lesser sound compared to the area that are empty. So, dullness on, so here this sound versus this is dullness, non dull, dull. So, dullness on percussion will be heard. Okay, so, after this let us talk about the pathogenesis. We will use pneumococcus as our basic structure that we will see how that causes the, the impact or how that causes pathology and the others will be similar in typical pneumonia. So, let us see. Look, pneumococcus is a pathogen that is lancet shaped. So, I will make that here. It is a lancet shaped pathogen. Normally, two of them live together. They are capsular as well. So, they live in a capsule. That is why the India ink test is positive for them. They are gram positive. So, they are purplish in, in their appearance. They are streptococci. So, they are basically genus streptococcus. Now, these pathogens when and they are ciliated and they have lots of other um, proteinases and stuff like that that can cause damage, but we are not doing the pathogen itself. Let us see how the pneumococcus would cause the effect. When the pneumococcus, so let us say here is the pneumococcus and where would it come from? Normally from the aspirate, the, the oropharyngeal flora has pneumococcus in 20 to 30 percent of the patients. You can contract that, we are talking about community acquired pneumonia. So, one can contract that from other people through the aerosol that is the breath they are inhaling and exhaling or from the contact as well. So, once the pneumococcus is inside and it comes into the alveoli, what it does is it starts adhering to the epithelium and start causing damage. When the damage happens, there are four stages. So, we are talking about the morphology now. There are four stages of the damage. The stages are called congestion, congestion, then red hepatization, and I will make those stages in these alveoli, then gray hepatization, and then resolution. These are the stages from, so this is stage number 1, so you do not start reading from up down. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. So, now let us see how the pathology occurs in these stages. Okay, so, congestion is the normal inflammatory process. So, what happens in the congestion is that is the very early sign and one, one thing before we talk more about it. This used to be when there were less antibiotics. These were the stages. Nowadays, with the antibiotics and early detection, normally you start treating the patient and if for God forbid the patient dies, you may not see the same stages that are occurring because the antibiotic and treatments modify the behavior here. So, this is if there is no treatment available, if there is no antibiotic available, then how the disease would progress, what are the cellular events that can be seen. So, congestion is where the inflammation starts. So, when the inflammation is starting, what is going to happen is that we are going to start having neutrophils to come in, right. So, neutrophils will come into the alveoli, then RBCs will start coming in as well, no nucleus in the RBC. So, this is just a RBC, this is another RBC and so on. RBCs would start coming in. Then proteinaceous material, so exudate will start appearing in here. Why would the exudate start coming in? Because the inflammation would cause the local congestion, the uh, 